Right, hello. Uh, so this is on uh, Dapper, which is a simple object relational mapper for .NET. Uh, <coughs> so an object relational mapper, ORM, maps data in a database to objects in code. Um, the big one for .NET is Entity Framework, and, and now there's Entity Framework Core. Uh, other ones you might have used are nHibernate, Link to SQL. Dapper does the same basic job as those, um, so it maps database data to objects but uh, it's more lightweight, it has fewer features than the big ones. Uh, so this is, this is Dapper on one slide. Um, so add in a NuGet package and a using statement and then you can do this, there's no other configuration that you need. So I'm using a, um, a sample database of music tracks and this is the track table on the right. Um, and I've created a track class with two properties and the property names match two of the column names in the database. Uh, and then at the bottom is the code. Uh, we get a, a standard .NET um, SQL connection. And I call this query method on it. So Dapper provides its functionality as a set of uh, extension methods to IDB connection. So uh, I'm calling query. I'm it's a generic method. I'm specifying track as the type of object I want to be created. And then I call the method with a SQL statement, which is just select everything from the track table. Uh, and this returns uh, a list, well, an I enumerable of track objects. Uh, and that's it, really. Um, so the obvious thing to point out compared to Entity Framework is that with Dapper, you have to write your own SQL. Um, so why might you want to use Dapper then? Uh, well, in, for a lot of cases, Entity Framework is the better choice because it has more features it's easy to use. Uh, but Dapper has some benefits. It's worth keeping in mind. Uh, it's very fast. It's, um, it's about the same performance as using straight up ADO.NET, but it's much easier to use. Uh, it's very lightweight. It's less than 200k for the DLL. Um, leaves you in control of the SQL, so up to you whether you see that as a benefit or not. We'll, we'll look at a comparison later. Uh, and it works with any database that has an ADO.NET uh, provider. So good coverage of databases. Just a bit of background. Uh, it's open source on uh, GitHub. It's been going about seven years. Um, it was created by someone at Stack Overflow, and it's still um, maintained by Stack Overflow and used in production there. They, they created it uh, to improve their page load times. Um, so it was created for performance reasons, but now lots of people use it not for performance, just because it's a nice, lightweight, simple library to use. Uh, and this graph at the bottom is just shows the GitHub commits over the seven years. So it's just nice to see it's been going a long time and it's stayed active. So I think it's fairly, fairly safe to use. So on to a few demos. I'm not going to do any live coding, but I've got some examples. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm using LinkPad just because it's an easy way to run bits of C-sharp code and print out some variables. So this is um, similar to the slide I just showed you. So I'm using um, SQLite as my database. So here I'm creating an IDB connection. I've got my track object. And at the top, I'm calling a Dapper query method and getting everything back. So let's just run this. And you can see down here that uh, this is the, the first 1,000 objects in the output, all the tracks in the database. Um, the difference between this and the slide is that I'm using query async just to show that Dapper supports async. So uh, exactly the same, but you just because it's async, you have to await the result in order to get your list of tracks. Uh, next example. This one shows uh, how to parameterize a query. So um, if you're building up if, if you need to use parameters, you should, you should always use parameters to build a SQL query. You should never concatenate strings, especially if it involves user input. That's a massive um, SQL injection risk. So Dapper supports parameters, and you'll see here, I, this one, I, I want to pull out the track uh, with a particular name. So in my SQL, I've got where name equals at name to find, and at uh, highlights name to find as a, as a parameter. Uh, and then Dapper will expect you to pass in an object with a property of the same name as the parameter name. So let's just run this. 
And you see we've pulled out our one uh, track object that matched. The other thing here is I'm using um, another extension method, query first or default. So by default, Dapper buffers the entire result set uh, when you run the query. And so it's good practice if you only want one to run, uh, to, to use query first. Otherwise, if, you're, if your select statement um, returns 10,000 rows, Dapper would make 10,000 objects, and then you'd throw them all away apart from the first one. So that's, that's why there's those overloads or, or other methods. Uh, another example, so this is a bit more complex query, it's just standard SQL, but here I'm um, counting the number of tracks in each of these three uh, music genres, so I'll, I'll just run it. So 130 jazz tracks, 48 pop tracks. Uh, this is to show that Dapper supports lists in parameters, so in the SQL, we've got where genre.name is in at genres, and that's my uh, array of, of genre names. Um, ADO.net doesn't support parameter lists, and so Dapper takes that and expands it into um, a set of separate parameters, so in, in at genres one, two, three. So it's, it's a lot nicer to work with. Um, Last example for querying is same SQL as before, select everything from the track table. This time I'm using the non-generic version of, of Dapper's query method. So if you don't specify the type of object that you want to get back, then Dapper will give you a, a list of dynamics. Um, this is quite a nice use of dynamics. So uh, with dynamic, you can call any property or method you want on it, and you get no compile time checking. So here. Uh, track.name matches a column name, so I actually get a value for this. This is the, uh, the first track name in that result set. But uh, track.not there doesn't match a column name, so it just returns null. Uh, this is a bit like json.net does something similar to, to dot into um, json objects. And last on the demo is, so we've looked at lots of querying. You need to be able to run create uh, insert, update, delete operations. So for that, Dapper gives you an execute extension method. Uh, it's exactly the same pattern. So uh, normal SQL, insert into album, uh, and it uses parameters in the same way. So we pass in parameters as, as a separate object. Um, so if I just run these, uh, the return value in this case is just the number of rows that were affected by the execute. Uh, that's it for the demos. So the uh, the group by query that I showed you earlier, this is it on the top. And I thought it'd be interesting just to compare this to entity framework or the, the link expression that you need to get the same results out. Um, so it's down to personal preference, but I think the DAP one is actually easier to read in this case. Um, link is nice because it gives you strong typing but it's not the easiest thing to read or, or create. If you look at what Entity Framework, how, how th this gets converted into uh, SQL, Entity Framework 2.0, EF Core 2.0 generates this, which as you'd expect looks very similar to the SQL at the top. One interesting thing with this is that um, there's no group by statement in the bottom one. So uh, here, we actually pulled down a lot more data from the database than needed, and the group by was done in code. Um, so that, that was not so good in EF Core 2.0. In, in 2.1, which was just released last month, apparently they've uh, sorted that out now, so that it, it can support generating group by in SQL. Uh, um, so that was all the stuff that Dapper can do. This is all the stuff it doesn't do, that Entity Framework does. Um, so you don't get SQL generation, you don't get any change tracking of objects, um, there's no database migrations or code generation from, from generating code from a database. If you do want some of this stuff, there are supplemental libraries that you can use to add it back in. Um, for SQL generation, there's 
dapper.contrib as, as an extra NuGet package you can add, and that does, do, does generate SQL for simple create, update, delete operations. Um, if you want database migrations, there are some, some standalone migration packages like dbup and uh, Fluent Migrator. Uh, but if you want all these things, then you're better off just using Entity Framework. Um, so yeah, Entity Framework probably still the most will still be the most used um, ORM, but Dapper is useful in certain cases. It's worth keeping in mind. Uh, use it if you want really good performance, if you want to write your own SQL, and if you just don't need the uh, the weight of a full fat ORM. Um, so cases where you could it could be useful if you're doing command query separation, then um, you could use Dapper for the query side of things. Uh, perhaps alongside Entity Framework for the commands. Um, in microservices, if you've got lots of microservices that all have their own data stores and you don't want to set up Entity Framework for each one of those, Dapper could be useful there. Um, accessing legacy databases. So I, I recently wrote a, uh, a web service that wrapped an old database. It was a very complicated database, but we only needed little bits of it. Um, so Dapper worked well there just to extract the, the small amount of data we needed from it. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks for listening. This is the great home in Landudno. That's not related. <laughs> <laughs>